today is all about amigurumi bunnies. We're gonna talk about big bunnies and little bunnies, crocheted bunnies, knit bunnies. It's going to be a bunny palooza. Hi, I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com and you're going to find links for all of these little bunny patterns in the description box below. But I also want to know how many bunnies have you crocheted or knit? Or you can just approximate it if there's no way for you to count all of them. I actually went through and counted up every single one that I've made and I was actually a little bit surprised at the total. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my very, very first one. This is the very first amigurumi bunny I ever crocheted and it's actually the very first amigurumi toy I ever made. I finished him on December 7th of 2017. This was from a tutorial from Wooly Wonders Crochet and she has so many wonderful crocheted toy videos. I highly recommend them. What I didn't realize at the time was that crocheting this little bunny was going to ignite a brand new passion of mine. It would be something that I would would want to do over and over again. And so I really love this little bunny rabbit. There's a lot of mistakes everywhere. There's holes. There's a lot going on here, but you know what? I'm so proud of them. And I'm so glad that I went out of my comfort zone and tried amigurumi, even when I didn't know that I could do it. I didn't believe in myself at the time. I didn't think that I had the skills. I didn't think I could do it, but I tried it anyway. And I will be for ever grateful for that just leap of faith that, hey, why not just try it? Fast forward a little over a year and I actually designed the little bitty bunnies here. This is a free pattern on my blog. I'll leave a link for it in the description box below, but this was the first time that I had designed any amigurumi and I was actually really, really terrified to do it, but I actually applied for a feature on the Hook Nook blog. Jessica does a designer call every once in a while, or at least she used to, and I thought, oh, I could write a little article or something about crocheting. What I didn't realize at the time was that I was signing up to design something for their feature, and I got accepted, and then I panicked and thought, oh, I didn't know I was going to be designing something. I thought I was just going to write a little article about crocheting or something about being a creative person, but no, they were looking for designers. So I went ahead and I got to work and turns out I ended up making these little bitty bunnies and I ended up being really proud of this little design and I wanted it to be simple and I wanted it to be easy for people to be able to make. So I consider this a beginner-ish amigurumi pattern. You really do need to know how how to make a magic ring, but I have a video for that if you need a little bit of help. But it's a free pattern on my blog in case you're interested and you can make the little boy and then you can make the little girl or you could just make one or the other. And I just think they're really cute and they're really fun and they're still a favorite of mine. The next little project I named Ralphie and I bet you can guess why, especially if you are a fan of A Christmas Story, the movie. This little guy technically isn't a bunny, but he's wearing a bunny suit, so I decided to include him. This is the pattern by Susan B. Anderson, bear in a bunny suit. So if you take his little hat off here, it's just a little bear. Although I don't really think he looks like a bear. I think he looks like an otter, which is really cute. I just love this little pattern so much. This is the first project that I worked on with double pointed needles, and that proved to be a big challenge at the time. Ah, his little ears sticking out. <laughs> It turned out to be a really big challenge, but I really enjoyed it. And it was one of those projects that I learned so much from. And I highly recommend the Susan B. Anderson patterns. I'm eventually going to try some of her yarn, which looks amazing. She has so many gorgeous knitted toy patterns. This is the point where I started to get kind of serious about making bunnies. I still remember the very first time I ever saw one of the little cotton rabbits. I was in a yarn shop and the owner showed me the Little Cotton Rabbit's Instagram account and there was a photo of a bowl and it had these little knitted bunny heads in it and it took my breath away and I thought, oh my goodness, that is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. They had little fuzz coming off of their ears and the sun was just shining through them and I thought that is so adorable and I was determined at that point to learn how to knit these little bunny rabbits. So this was my very 
first attempt and I knit this back in May of 2019 and I really learned so much from this pattern. I enjoyed every single stitch. I got so much out of making this little pattern. So if you're not familiar with the Little Cotton Rabbits, Julie is the designer. She is so incredibly talented. She has a gorgeous blog and her designs are the creme de la creme. They don't get better than these. And one of the things is that I just knit this little bunny. I wasn't worried about making the face look perfect. I wasn't worried about any of that. I just wanted to be able to make these beautiful little toys. And this started a great love affair with knitting bunnies. And you'll see that I continued to make bunnies over and over again. So some of these bunnies are no longer with us. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> what I mean is some of these bunnies that I'm going to be talking about, I either gave away or I was selling them at one point. So this one is going to be one that I gave to my mom and it was a little cotton rabbits. And what was so much fun was knitting the little cable knit sweater for him and then giving him the little eye patch. I thought that was really fun, but the little cotton rabbits continued to be one of my favorite things to knit and I love the bunny pattern so much. So then after that, I did another bunny and it was one in a blue dress and I just loved this one so much and I gave it to my really good friend Tanya who has a little girl and her little daughter Juliana actually made a little playhouse for the bunny out of a little cardboard box and it was just really adorable. So these little bunnies are so much fun to give away as gifts because they are so beautiful. The clothes are just so gorgeous. Okay, let's see. I did another one. Oh, then I made the fuzzy bunny and I used some felted yarn, which was really unusual. And it was a gift from Hubby Yarn and it was really fun to work with. And he had a little Nordic sweater on and that one was just so cute. I had a lot of fun with that one as well. And then the next one was another little cotton rabbits and I called this my Meg bunny because somehow this bunny turned out looking like my oldest daughter when she was a little girl. She's 26 years old now, but this captured the essence of her so much and I ended up giving her to my daughter who teaches piano to little children and she uses little Meg Bunny as a little prop and teaches kids how to play the piano and uses little Meg Bunny to teach different little skills. So I think that's really fun. The next bunny is a pattern by Jet Cat and I called this my little cranky bunny. He was teeny tiny and he was a gift to one of my daughter's friends. And what was really fun about this one is that I knew this one while I was camping. Actually not camping, we were glamping up in the Great Smoky Mountains and I did a video all about it. But this one was also on double pointed needles and it was challenging because it was itty bitty. This little bunny rabbit is like this big and I really enjoyed making this one though because it was challenging and it just turned out so darn cute. And then after I made that one, I made another one that wasn't quite so cranky and I gave her a really big little pom-pom and I gave her away as a gift as well. The next bunny rabbit was a Christmas bunny rabbit that I did and it was from a little cotton rabbits pattern. And I think that if I had to rank all of my bunnies, this one might be my absolute favorite. It's the first time that I ran a giveaway on Instagram and I actually gave her away and that was so much fun. I loved being able to just give one away to someone who maybe had never had a little cotton rabbits bunny before, but I loved that one so much and I loved the color work on the dress. It just, it's probably one of my very favorite ones I've ever made. And I was so inspired with the Christmas bunny theme that I ended up making a little boy one with a textured sweater and little striped pants and I thought he was really fun. And I ended up sending him to a family member that lives overseas. Those little Christmas bunnies were just so much fun to make. You're probably beginning to see a theme here that I knit a whole lot of the little cotton rabbits bunnies, but this next one was really special to me and I made a vintage nurse bunny. And I did this because my neighbor who lives across the street from me was a nurse for 52 years and I just wanted to give her something and she is just so much fun and I'm going to share a little bit of that video of her when I surprised her with the bunny rabbit and you'll see her adorable little French bulldog Mooksy. Hello. Hello. Hi, Luxie. <laughs> Hi, Luxie. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm scared. All Ms. right. Elise has something for you. I've got something. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hi, Hi Luxie. Hi, Luxie. Oh okay. I'm scared. You should be. 
Very scared. I mean, oh, oh my god. Oh, it's a nurse. I love it. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Oh my god into my gallery. How fun was that? That is probably one of the only times that I've actually gotten to see people open one of the toys that I've made for them, and so that was really special for me. I got the idea for making a nurse bunny from Susie Marie Nitz, and if you don't know Susie Marie Nitz, you need to go follow her on Ravelry. She has a bunch of the clothes for the little cotton rabbits that she does an adaptation for them, and she has the most beautiful color work dresses that you have ever seen they are just gorgeous and they're all free adaptations of the little cotton rabbits pattern dresses so these next two bunnies were also little cotton rabbits patterns and i ended up at the beginning of 2020 deciding that i was going to start selling bunnies again wait a minute was that 2020 i can't believe that was 2020 wait let me see I don't remember when that was. I'm not exactly sure when that was, but at one point I decided that I was going to start selling custom toys. And these next two bunnies that I made were both custom orders from people and they were wonderful to work on. I really enjoyed this. So this first one is a little boy bunny in a red cable knit sweater. And the lady who ordered him wanted something that reminded her of her father who had worked for the railroad. And she chose the colors and I got to work with her and make exactly what she wanted and that was so much fun. Now that cable knit sweater just made me cry actually because <laughs> I had to make it like three times because I was making the cables while I was distracted and I was trying to watch TV and my brain is not, I'm just not smart enough to be able to watch TV and do cables. Although cables really aren't that hard, it takes a level of concentration for me that I cannot be distracted at all. So I had to start that little sweater like three times and I just got to a point where I just cried about it. <laughs> the next one was so much fun. It is a wonderful lady who lives out in Arizona and she wanted a musical themed bunny. And one of the great things is that my oldest daughter who I talked about a little while ago is a musician and I just had so much fun coming up with the idea for using the little musical notes and she had chosen the colors for this and she was so happy with this little bunny rabbit because she was a musician herself. I really had so much fun creating those custom orders for people and it was just a way to make people happy and give them a big old smile when they opened that box and saw their little bunny rabbits in there. The next two bunnies were also little cotton rabbits patterns and they were the small size bunnies and I wanted to try that pattern out and I had two really special ladies in mind when I decided to make these little bunny rabbits. The first is my good friend Dawn from the YouTube channel Dawn's Days. She had sent me some beautiful little gifts and I just wanted to bless her back. So I created this little bunny. She was so cute. One of my favorite ones I've ever made. And I did a little bumblebee motif on the dress, which was so much fun to make. And Dawn lives in the Netherlands, but she's originally from Manchester in the United Kingdom in England. And I guess one of their symbols is the bumblebee. So it was really fun to make that one for her. And then I made a matching little boy bunny and he had a yellow and white sweater and a little cute pair of shorts. And I ended up sending him to Helen from Flora Honeypot on Instagram. She has been so wonderful and always sends my cats and Jersey boy Christmas presents. She's a big animal lover and I just wanted to thank her. So I sent her that little boy bunny as well. Now this is the point where we start veering away from obsessively making little cotton rabbits bunnies. And this one is another pattern from Jet Cat. Now I made one of her original ones, which was the little teeny tiny cranky bunny that I talked about earlier, but this one is a little bit different. And this bunny rabbit was one of the hardest toys I have ever knit in my entire life. But I will say that it was absolutely worth it because I think that it turned out so very cute. I actually loved it so much. I made another one. I'm gonna go ahead and grab her right now. Look how cute they are. Oh my goodness. I love these so 
much. Um, one of the things that was so challenging about these guys was their little legs. Now, this may not look hard, but for whatever reason, oh, this one tested my patience. It tested my perseverance. It tested me in so many ways. I got so frustrated with them. I just threw the project down for a little while because I just couldn't get the legs. I eventually just had to figure out, okay, I can't distinguish what this pattern is trying to tell me to do. And she actually had a little video tutorial that went with it. No matter how hard I tried, I could not figure out what she was doing. So I just had to kind of wing it and figure out how would I join this and make these legs go together if I were doing it my way. So that's what I had to do and it worked out perfectly. But once I actually got past the legs, it was easy. There was no problems once I got past the legs. And I just think that these have the most expressive faces. I love it. And I love their big oversized ears. I mean, how cute are they? Anyway, these are two of my favorites. I'll probably never knit another one again <laughs> because those legs give me nightmares. I don't want to do that again, but they're really, really cute. This is one of the only little cotton rabbits bunnies that I've actually kept for myself. He's got his cute little sweater and then he's got a little basket full of carrots. So these carrots are actually a free pattern on Jen Hayes Creations website and I'll leave a link for that as well. What I love about this sweater is that she has a design motif where you can make it into a little dog and this one reminded me of our dog Jersey Boy and I thought I wanted to put him on a little sweater so that I'll always remember our sweet Jersey boy. So Jersey boy is still with us, by the way. I'm I'm talking about him like he has passed on the rainbow bridge, but no, he's still very much alive. He's upstairs right now, probably sleeping. But um, I loved this one so much. I didn't realize that I ran out of yarn, grabbed another skein. This is the Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino. But what I didn't realize is that that is not the same color. So it is um, a little bit of a bluish green and this is a little bit of a greenish blue down here, but it doesn't bother me at all. It's just for me. And actually, I think unless you're really looking at it, you probably don't notice it, but I think he's really, really cute. And I love the little eye patch. I think that's so cute. And then to add the ears that are different colors. The next bunny that I made was also a little cotton rabbits bunny. And this one was really special because I told you about the bunny that I made for my daughter, Meg. And and she uses it to teach piano lessons and her little student Alex fell in love with Meg Bunny and he always wanted to talk to Meg Bunny during his piano lessons and my daughter asked me mom will you make Alex a little bunny rabbit so I was like of course I will I can't wait to make Alex a little bunny rabbit so I knit him one I put the letter A on his sweater just for him and he loved his bunny so so much and that just made my day that was so much fun to just surprise a cute little boy with his very own bunny. So this next bunny is not from Little Cotton Rabbits. Surprise! This is from Dot Pebbles Knits. And this was also one of the most challenging patterns that I have ever made before. But oh my goodness gracious, it was totally worth it. I love this bunny so much. I love how realistic it is. If you've ever gone to Dot Pebbles Instagram account, you're gonna see some of the most amazing knitted toys that I have ever seen. They look so realistic. There are times when I'm scrolling through that I can't tell, wait a minute, is that an actual animal or is that a knitted animal? They're beautiful, but I will say I feel like that the patterns are challenging the way they're written. And as much as I love the patterns, you got to be able to kind of work through some of that. It's totally worth it, but I want you to be aware of it if you decide to knit one of these for yourself. I actually did an entire video about this one. One of the biggest challenges for me was that you're actually creating some holes in the face part. I kept thinking that I was doing something wrong and then as you work through the pattern it begins to make sense but even if you were to read it you wouldn't know that you made holes and I wish that she had put a little note in there that said something like these holes that you've made are purposeful and there's a reason for it but that wasn't in there so I struggled through it and had to just keep going by blind faith that the pattern was written correctly and it was. I just wish there had been more notes to kind of lead you along the way. But her designs 
are extraordinarily beautiful and I'm so glad that I made this beautiful little bunny rabbit. Well, actually, it's not little. It's actually pretty big. It's pretty life-size. These look almost identical to the kind of bunnies that are in my neighborhood. Yesterday, we saw our first one, so it's spring and they're all hopping all around and we go for our walks in the early, well, late afternoons, early evenings, and you'll start to see them. And Jersey Boy, our dog, goes crazy because he would love to chase those little bunny rabbits, but they're way faster than an overweight 11-year-old dog. So there's no worries that he's going to catch one of them. <laughs> I love how this one turned out, and I used the Rowan Kid Classic and Rowan Kid Silk Haze together to give that really realistic, fuzzy appearance, and that yarn worked out perfect for this one. This little bunny rabbit I actually made because I was doing a video all about beginner knitted toys, and I found this one from Meg Made With Love, and I thought this one will be so much fun. So if you're looking for a beginner knitted bunny pattern, this would be a perfect one. It's really cute. It's basically just like a little rectangle with arms, legs, and ears. How simple is that? And it's just simple embroidery on the face. This one was really fun and I just loved how cute it was and easy it was and it whipped up really quickly and I love those little skinny arms and legs. The last bunny that I made is this adorable little knitted bunny by Lovely Knit Creation. I actually just did a video all about this adorable pattern just recently. It's one of my favorite ones and you may be thinking, well, you basically only showed us knitted patterns. Well, I did did mostly knit these bunnies, but I recently bought a pattern from Nina's Time and it's called the Baby Cake Pattern. <gasps> Look at these little bunny rabbits. Oh my gosh, they're all crocheted and I just think they are so gorgeous. I haven't started them yet, but they are ones that I am definitely going to make. And I wanted to show them to you guys so that you didn't just feel like I only talked about knitted bunnies and I didn't really give much attention to crocheted bunnies. But honestly, I haven't crocheted as many bunnies as I thought. But can you guess how many in total? Where are you keeping track? Probably not. Why would you keep track? But it was 24 in all, which that kind of blew me away that I made 24 bunnies. I think that's the most of one kind of animal that I have made. You can kind of tell I sort of like the bunny rabbits and these were all so, so much fun. I hope you enjoyed Bunny Palooza today and that you had fun just looking back over the bunny rabbits that I've crocheted and knit. But I would really love to know what was your your favorite bunny pattern that you have ever made yourself. I am always on the lookout for new bunny rabbit patterns and I think it would be really fun to check them out. So please leave them in the comment section below. Also, let me know how many bunnies you've made too, if you're a bunny holic like I am. But I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already subscribed. And I hope you all stay safe out there and happy stitching.